we're almost there guys. One more question type and after this one, we're finally going to have some fun with answer show question. But before we get to enjoy that, we have to go through today first. That's right, the most dreaded retail lecture. Oh, I have so much to talk about on this one, and I don't really know where to begin. So fasten your seatbelts, because we're going to blitz through this first bit. Basic stuff. You will end up with 3 to 4 lectures per test, and they are really like recordings of an actual lecture, so it affects the listening score as well. If you somehow enjoyed the scribe image and wondered if you can get a harder listening version for it, that's what you get for retail lecture, with an audio duration of about a minute to a minute and a half. If you think going from 40 seconds of preparation time for read aloud to 25 seconds for describe image can actually get worse, that's what you get for retail lecture, with only 10 seconds after the audio before the mic starts recording. If you think describe image isn't open-ended enough, that's what you get for retail lecture with broader topics, more in-depth discussions, and a bunch of weird accents. Yes, you can run into Indian, Irish, or Scottish accents, and believe it or not, those are the better ones. Sounds like you like retail lecture already. So it is difficult. I won't even waste my time trying to sugarcoat it. It is quite analogous in terms of scoring to describe image. You have fluency, pronunciation, and content, the usual trifecta. For fluency and pronunciation, you follow every piece of guideline we discussed for all the previous speaking questions, and then you will be fine. You read aloud instead of actually talk, and you can write out the script when practicing. It's not feasible during the test, but make it a habit so you can start forming the script with your notes in your mind. As for content, it is very similar to describe image. Be thorough with your coverage and get to the point, where there's usually about 4-5 to five important pieces of info you should talk about, and that's it. Delivery-wise, you have much liberty just as with describe image, so use simpler sentences, shorter sentences, baby sentences. For this one particular question, I will briefly discuss how agencies teach this in their 60 hour long courses. Yeah, if you think my 20 minute videos are too long, I can only wish you good luck. So basically how agencies teach this question type is, to put it abruptly, abuse it. They dig up the question pool, they offer templates that are even worse than the ones for describe image, they do predictions, and they tell you that it's not really important. I have numbers to back it up for such a difficult and challenging question type that actually lasts quite a while due to the audios, agencies claim that they only make up 6% of the speaking score. It's so ridiculous when you put it into perspective. For the meme question type that is answer show question, agencies usually don't even bother teaching this stuff, they just hand you the study materials and ask you to be self-reliant. But guess what? According to their quote-unquote analysis, answer show question makes up 8% of the speaking score. Are you kidding me right now? On the one hand, agencies claim that retail lecture is basically negligible even for someone going after a 79, remember how those scores actually have some room for errors, and they still supply all the worst methods of study and ask students to just get lucky, and they don't do it justice by actually spending some time and talking about it. I'll let that sink in and ask you if you are truly getting the most out of those courses. Like, you can't just say it's not important so you don't have to teach it, but then still give students a bunch of crap and say deal with it. If you are curious about what the actual percentages are, I refuse to make an uneducated estimate. I simply don't know, and probably the officials would never release it. I will say this, for those that can get a 79, retail lecture to them is a challenge, but most likely they can manage it well. You can train to improve for this question type, no matter how difficult it actually is. I'd like to spend a bit more time to show you guys why the agency methods suck. First is the question pool digging. They ask students or even snipers to leak the test questions, and they gather them up to form a collection. Then they just give that collection to students and ask them to memorize everything. By then, efficiency is thrown out of the window, and it's really not effective. Think about this. For you, if getting the 79 or not purely depends on whether they just happen to release a new question and by then you're just stuck, I'd say you don't deserve it. Besides, it has been observed that for the same topic, and for this one I'll use the example of the Indian farmers committing suicide, 
There might be multiple versions as an anti-cheating mechanic. One version focuses on the fact that they establish seed banks, so farmers don't go bankrupt when trying to buy seeds at a high cost. And another version focuses on explaining why globalization caused this phenomenon. And those are just the two versions that I have come across with hearsay. Who knows if there's more? Moving on, the second method is the template. Seriously, the template should go into the dumpster the day it was invented. I gave credit to the describe image templates, maybe a bit more than they deserve, because it actually delivers some result. That is, if used appropriately and flexibly. But for the retail lecture template, over half of the text is pure junk. It is designed to function if you can only get a few words out of the passage, and it helps you to bullshit the answer because otherwise you would have nothing. I cannot stress this enough. Listen to the audio. Get the main ideas and just say them with simple sentences. You don't need the templates at all. The best I can say about this piece of junk is it provides a bad answer. So unless you can't come up with anything, don't even bother. Then comes the predictions. They claim to have over 50% accuracy. Again, I don't know if they can actually predict the correct questions and the correct versions. I've heard a little about how they come up with their guesses. Basically, they ask test takers which questions they had, and if a question shows up, they predict that it will show up again. If it shows up too many times, they say it's going to be less likely to get the question for yourself. I think that's how it works. I don't really know, but I say this with pride. I don't have to know this crap to help my students getting a good score. And again, by then you are just testing your luck, and its efficiency is just bad. You will be memorizing over a hundred questions just for retail lecture, and they might just be the wrong version. Then why not just learn the correct way if you genuinely want to be lazy? The last one just triggers me every time I talk about it. They say retail lecture is not important and came up with the number six percent. But why bother providing so many revision methods just for the sake of completeness? That's overdoing it a bit, don't you think? Their actions just scream it is important, but they don't actually have a good way to teach it. So they use all those materials to basically say, "Here's everything," and if you still can't do well, it's your problem. I'll let you decide for yourself if you still want to go down that rabbit hole or you want to learn the methods that actually help you do better. Oh, <laughs> that felt good. As you can see, I have a big problem with how this question type is being taught. Lucky for you guys, I do have a set of methods designed by myself that have helped so many students to score high. You have no idea how annoyed I was every time I have a private student who wasted months on the agency's methods and still can't even get close to their score, and then spending more months to get rid of that worthless mindset. So do me a favor. Let's start fresh and actually learn how you can do it with these, okay? To best explain my methodology, I will need to make another comparison with IELTS. This goes beyond just for retail lecture, but many other question types that have a listening component. For IELTS listening, you have fundamentally two tasks. One is just getting some detail out of the passage, like a time, a location, or maybe someone's name and position. For those, you just need to identify the keywords in the audio, and then you can answer the question without any trouble. The second type is more difficult, like some multiple choice questions, because it needs you to understand what the passage is actually about. So, how is it for PTE listening? I say the majority is the latter. You need to understand the passage, and the details are actually not important. What matters more is whether you can grasp the central idea. So, what details are we talking about? The first is numbers. I have many students writing down a ton of numbers when taking notes, but ended up not knowing what the numbers represent. If this is your issue as well, don't write down the numbers. Focus on listening to understand what the numbers mean. The numbers are like the optional details from Describe Image. If you get them, feel free to throw them into your answer, but they are definitely not the most crucial, especially when compared to their underlying implications. Same goes with the year and other types of details. Usually, they have a clear message apart from the exact digits. 
Some questions are about historical events, and they might give like five different years to piece out the timeline. I had students just writing down the five numbers, but have zero idea about what actually happened in those years. Then what purpose do those numbers have? Absolutely nothing. And in this case, not even a template can give you an answer, let alone a decent one. To demonstrate this, I will play half of the audio for one question. It has a bunch of numbers in it, but I want you to focus on what the numbers actually mean. Try and take some notes, and we will later on discuss how you can improve its efficiency. Until the advent of the new medications, people diagnosed with schizophrenia occupied one half of the hospital beds in the United States. One out of every 10,000 people come down with schizophrenia, and 750,000 are treated every year. Several million people in the United States currently have had this disorder at one time or another in their lifetime. First of all, don't get scared if you don't know what schizophrenia is. For now, you just need to know that this lecture is precisely about schizophrenia. The lady in the audio mentioned four numbers: half, one in ten thousand, seven hundred and fifty thousand, and millions. If you only have those four numbers written down and nothing else, then you fit the category of having no better option but to go with a template, because these notes help you achieve nothing. If you focus all of your attentions on those details, you lose the actually important stuff. Another way to look at it is if I just randomly change one of the numbers, say one in ten thousand to one in one thousand, does it change the core message? It probably doesn't. So. What do those numbers actually tell you? The messages just lie in the second half of those sentences. Half of the hospital beds are taken by patients with this disease. So for now, if you still don't know what schizophrenia is, you should at least know that it is a disease. Then here's my question: If you don't know how to pronounce or spell this word, can't you just replace the word in your speech with a disease? Sure, you lose the content for that particular word, but wouldn't it be easier to get everything else? Just like for repeat sense, don't ever focus on that one word because the rest matter much more. Let's look at the other numbers. One in ten thousand refers to the likelihood of getting the disease. Seven hundred and fifty thousand people were treated for this disease in a year. Millions have had it once in their lifetime. I think you should be able to get it by now. The message is actually really simple. It is a common disease. If your answer contains these two sentences, this lecture is about a disease. It is very common within the population, or something similar. You are done for the first half. And once again, referring back to describe image, if you want to add a bit more to the answer, say some of the numbers, go for it. Just make sure you read it out loud and make it simple. Does this sound like a deja vu moment? Have we come across this message before? I never talked about it when discussing describe image, did I? Or did I not? Now let's listen to the second half of the passage. For this bit, you should remember that the details actually don't matter. I'll give you some hints for the second half. Firstly, you will get more clues regarding what schizophrenia actually is. Second, the speaker will make a comparison, find out what it is. Lastly, there is some difference for schizophrenia regarding different genders. After listening to the passage, I will show you two versions of the notes. One would be not very helpful, and the other one will actually make your answering a lot easier. Although we think of schizophrenia as a mental disorder, the lifetime risk of this illness is the same as for diabetes, which of course is an illness that one hears a lot more about. And for which there's been a lot more research and treatment development. The peak age of onset is somewhat different for men and women. Men usually begin to have difficulties in their late teens or early twenties, whereas women tend to begin to have this illness in their middle twenties and even into their thirties. So let's take a look at the two versions of notes. Hmm, I can't really tell which is the better one. Can you? One thing to note: both notes are factually correct, but you should try to do the one on the right because those are the core messages. The one on the left isn't necessarily bad, but if you only have the info on the left, you can't possibly come up with a decent answer. You can argue that the one on the right contains less info, 
But in terms of grasping the main idea and ease to come up with the speech, it is clearly the superior one. Again, if you have some info from the left, you definitely can use them, but mostly as a supplement to the core structure. Let's go through the notes in detail. Firstly, the man mentioned diabetes. This is a far more common disease and many of you should know what it is. However, if you think schizophrenia is anything similar, you will be wrong, because he said schizophrenia is a mental disorder. And here you go, if you don't feel comfortable saying the word schizophrenia because you're not familiar, just replace it with mental disorder. As for the comparison with diabetes, the main idea is that they have similar lifetime risks. It's more important for you to get the similar risks part than the word diabetes. Again, if you don't say diabetes, you will lose out a bit on content. But this is an acceptable trade-off if you can handle the delivery better. Also, they are different in the sense that people are more aware of diabetes and there's more treatment. I'll digress a bit and talk about what schizophrenia actually is. It's an overwhelming anxiety. Except it's not. It's actually being hyper stressful to your surrounding environments. No, that's not it either. It's actually a physical condition that causes cannibalism. That doesn't sound right at all. My point is, I can literally switch out schizophrenia from the passage with OCD, paranoia, or PTSD, actually any mental disorder, and it would still make sense. This is how PTE comes up with its questions. At most, it uses some scary vocabulary, but there's not extra knowledge required to answer the questions, apart from that word. And I've already shown you how that one word really doesn't matter if you can find a simple substitute, and you can just go on with covering the more important stuff in the passage. Then he went on to discuss how it is different for men and women. Again, you have some numbers flying around. Men usually get it in their late teens and early 20s, and women usually get it in mid 20s or 30s. Stop there and think about how trivial those numbers actually are. What is the core message again? Men and women usually get the disease at different ages. How simple is that? If you want to throw in a bit more detail, how about men usually get it earlier than women? Do you ever have to talk about the actual numbers? It's a bonus if you can have the core idea and some numbers in there, but just like how retail lecture is only worth quote unquote 6%, numbers suck. Now, let's put everything together and come up with some answers. Just like how it went for describe image, I'll show you two versions of answers so you have an idea of what the bare minimum is and how you can turn it up to 9000. Here's the easy one. This lecture is about a mental disorder. It is very common in the United States. It is compared with another disease because they have similar risks, but one is more well known with better treatment. Men and women usually get this disease at different ages in their lives. I'm not kidding. If you find a way to put in schizophrenia and diabetes, along with maybe a few numbers, it will earn you a perfect score. Even without those words, we know that content will not be zero because we didn't make stuff up by using a sociopathic template. And this passage should be easy enough for every one of you if you can handle read aloud, which usually has more scary vocabulary and sentence structures. Here is the Super Saiyan version, if you dare. This lecture is about schizophrenia, which is a mental disorder. One in 10,000 people have this disease, and millions in the United States have had it sometime in their lives. It is compared with diabetes as they have similar lifetime risks, but the latter is more well known with better research and treatment. The peak age of onset is different for men and women, with men earlier in their teens and early 20s, and women later in their mid 20s and their 30s. For this one, except for some numbers the lady mentioned in the beginning, I have literally covered everything. If you have the capability, you can choose to just paraphrase the whole thing and mention every last bit of detail. But still, it's important for you to know what the basics are, what trivial information can be left out, and that specific details don't matter as much as you think, so don't ever trip over one single word. Have I said that before? Can't remember if I did in the repeat sentence video. Do you mind go check it out and see if I did? So what exactly is schizophrenia? If you're really that curious, go do a quick Google search and you'll get the info you want. I do recommend, however, the movie A Beautiful Mind. The protagonist has schizophrenia. I might have spoiled the plot. Whoops. 
If you are still wondering about this even though we have clearly established that it doesn't matter, here is the real definition. It is a condition during which you don't want to like, subscribe, and share this video. Prove to me that you're not sick right now. That'll be all for today. There will be a walkthrough video coming up so we can further talk smack about those agencies and their templates, while actually practicing something useful. The next crash course will probably be shorter because it's more of a meme. We'll try to have more fun with it. Surprisingly, Donald Trump hasn't said something stupid for a while now. I stand corrected. So not much has changed. How comforting. Then just as always, I'll see you all next time.